Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is a little bit different in the fact that I'm going to try to voice over this whole thing. You put in comments how you think it is and if you think I should keep doing ones like this instead of just me recording while talking. But today's video is actually about CFM. Now you've probably heard me talk about this quite a bit during these all of these videos that I've done, but one of the questions or myths that might be trying to get busted here is, do you actually need more CFM? And that's what we're going to talk about today. So just to give you an idea, every engine needs a certain amount of airflow. And we relate that obviously in CFM. The more the engine turns as far as RPM, the more airflow it needs. The larger the engine, the more airflow it needs. Um, but here's the real question though. What happens if you're giving the engine more than what it needs? Because I think a lot of times people look at a head flow and they're like, man, that's supposed to say 330 CFM, but if I had one that flowed 360 CFM, I should make way more power because obviously it's flowing more air and I should make more power. That's a common myth and it's been spread around quite a bit. But the thing is, the engine can only consume a certain amount of airflow. And that's what today's video is pretty much about. No matter how much uh, extra you put into it, an engine will only consume a, a certain amount of airflow. And so there's some math you can do to figure this out. One of the programs that I use is called PipeMax. You can purchase that. Um, it is available. So I did just a real rough one for you this video just to kind of show you. If you take a 400, doesn't ask if it's small block Chevy, Ford, LS, none of that. If you take a 400 cubic inch engine and you only turn it 6,500 RPMs, it's got 11, and a half to, or 11 to 1 compression ratio, a 650 lift cam, um, according to the and 108 uh, volumetric efficiency and what that is is the volumetric efficiency is how um, efficient the engine is actually using air and 108 is about what an average 11 to 1 motor would be the higher end engines that are really highly developed really thin ring packages vacuum pumps and all that will be higher but for the most part most of you will probably fall if you're this type of engine will fall about 108 percent so using that the math from pipe max says you only need 268 CFM to 284 CFM for intake flow. For exhaust flow, it says you need 183 to 207 CFM. So if I look at that, and by the way, that estimated that it to make about 600 horsepower. So if I look at that airflow and I say, well, 284 CFM, then I'll seem like that much. But what if I went ahead and I put a head on that flowed say 300 CFM? Now that's more than what the engine's actually requiring. It's requiring like 15 CFM or less. Shouldn't it make considerably more power? Well, the answer is uh, yes and no. And here's what I mean by that. The engine, again, was only going to breathe in a certain amount of air, but it still may gain more power, not necessarily because you gained more CFM. So even though it's 300 CFM more, it makes more power, but not as much power as you would think from the gained in CFM. And the reason for this is because the engine itself can't take any more airflow. So how come it makes more power if you give it more airflow? Well, the reason is um, you made the port more efficient. And if you make the port more efficient, it takes less pumping losses. And what I mean by that is the engine itself does take a certain amount of power to pull in air. Um, if you can make the port more efficient, it will take less energy to actually pull in the air. So since it takes less energy to pull in the air, it can give it more to the crankshaft and hence you're making more power. It's not because it flowed more air. It's just because the port itself is more efficient and easier to do. The other thing that can happen too is typically when we port heads, yes, if you make it more efficient, obviously usually it flows more air. But the other thing you can do when you port heads and it makes it more flow more air, you can also make it better for wet flow. Now I know some of you LS guys are like, I shouldn't have to worry about that, I'm fuel injected you still have to deal with wet flow because there's always going to be a reverse pulse that comes back up through the intake and that causes um, the air fuel mixture kind of to get all over your intake ports and if you don't believe me take off a, a stock ls take off a set of their heads and you'll see the black soot particles throughout the intake port and if it was perfectly dry you wouldn't see that so point being is wet flow is also important no matter if you're efi so if you poured a set of cylinder heads and you've improved the wet flow uh, and made it where the air fuel stays more stable throughout the entire port and goes where it needs to be, then obviously it makes more power. And then the CFM, typically when you do that, also does increase. So if you looked at it from that point, like, no, I made more power because I went to this 300 CFM head. 
it wasn't necessarily the CFM that did it. It was the other stuff involved, such as the wet flow and the port efficiency. There's another thing that can also play a part because if you just strictly deal with CFM, you're missing on many parts. And if you notice right now, I've left off the entire velocity part. And you might be like, ah, oh, I went into this video now and you're talking about velocities. Well, the reason why I haven't brought up velocities in this video is because the previous one, which I highly suggest you to go back and watch, I had talked about velocities in the port. So this one, I'm kind of leaving that part out just because you can go watch the other one and it'd be just fine. But for this video, we're just kind of leaving that part out. But when you port ahead, typically um, the velocity is inside the port. So I'm saying if you could keep them the same size and they flowed a little bit more and it was the size that it needs. So we're assuming for this practical purpose, the size of the port is what the engine needs. You've given it more airflow than what it needs. But inside the port itself, maybe you've made the areas where they're not as a dramatic of area change. In other words, you didn't go from small to huge to make an air go over a short side or something else like that. And since there wasn't what we call velocity gradients, which is the change in the speed of air throughout the port, it hence becomes more efficient and also helps with flat flow and stuff. And usually that also kind of turns up in uh, CFM that gain as well. So in saying all this, the point I'm trying to make through this video, which hopefully it isn't too long and you're getting something out of it is you will not always gain more power just because of CFM. And I know it's, it's ingrained into all of our heads, you know, it needs more air to make more power. There's a simple test you can do to kind of prove this. Um, and I've done it before. If you've seen my S10, you know I ran a 355. Well, I have a thousand CFM carburetor. And if you do any of the math, it says that carburetor is far too large for the cubic inch size. And I know, and for you fuel injected guys, give me a second, I'll come back to you too. I have tried a smaller carburetor, 830 CFM. So it's, it's a dramatically larger carburetor and it went faster. Now, the engine itself said, I don't need a thousand CFM, and there's no way I can't argue with that. It does not need a thousand CFMs. I don't believe that the extra CFM is what made it run faster or make more power on the dyno because of that larger carburetor. What it was is other factors. So having the bores larger, it put them closer to where they were over the dividers and the plenum. And the plenum. Um, it also, it takes less pumping loss because the engine itself, it doesn't have to pull as hard to get that air out. So there's more, it's not the CFM that causes it to gain power, it was other factors. But the reason why I talk about that is this. If I, when I went from an 830 to a thousand CFM and it only gained eight horsepower. So that's a hundred and something CFM, more than a hundred CFM gain in airflow through the whole system, um, should have been anyway, and it gained eight horsepower. This would be very common and then I'm gonna go back to the EFI guys real quick here for this one too. Several of you have probably noticed this too if you're EFI guys where you've bought or your intake maybe had a 98 millimeter throttle body and maybe you went up to 102 or something larger and you really didn't see any much more power. Like you might've saw maybe five, 10. It goes back to the beginning. The engine can only use a certain amount of airflow. Giving it more won't make it that way. So what happens though if you take an LS head? that's flowing pretty good amount of air because if you look at that math according to this the ls3 head already from the factory flows more air than what it needs uh, to make that 600 horsepower you're correct but then you poured it now you made it flow 370 cfm right because that's usually what ls3 heads will do and you're looking at that and you're like this should be a real winner i'm going to get tons of power you would expect a huge gain from just the amount of cfm and and it does make considerably more power with the ported heads but it isn't necessarily because of the gain in CFM. A lot of that happens actually because of the gain in CFM before the peak. So you could think about two ported setup heads. If you look at the flow numbers um, from the stock LS3 at 400, then you look at the ported one at 400, the ported one flows considerably more air there. And here's the catch. If you look at the flow numbers at that 400 point, that's not as much air as what the engine is actually requiring. Because we said it needs 294. Most LS heads, I think, out of LS3 heads, they're in the 250 range at four. And ported, they're in the 260 range. So the, clearly they're under what it's asking for. So you giving it more airflow there, that's what made it make more power, not necessarily this peak flow. So you gotta kinda understand that too. So when you're looking at um, flow charts and you're like, this is gonna be the ticket here. Um, it's not necessarily, and I, I show the peak numbers always because it shows how much, the, how stable the port is. 
but the lower lift ones itself, like 400, I'm not talking one and two, those are worthless. Um, the 400 number really gives you a good picture if you can gain airflow there of how much more power it's gonna make. So, because in that range, it most times you have not hit uh, what the engine's actually asking for. So, I know that might've been a little confusing. Point being is when you pour to the heads, you probably gain the low lift flow and the peak flow, which you think would be the one that makes you make more power. It already has more than that. So at the lower lifts, it hasn't got to that point yet. So if you give it there, it's, that's also what's making it make more power. That's why you could take that stock LS3 head and then you put on a ported one and it gains so much power, even though the engine says, I don't need, you know, cause I think stock ones flow like 310, 317. Maybe I'll put a clip here in this video. And then the ported ones flow 370. It doesn't need 370, but it did, did need the lower lift flow. And that's what you're able to give it. So then if you look at a small block Chevy guys like us, I mean, by the way, I poured all heads. So don't think I'm totally bashing on either one of them. I poured all aluminum heads, two valves in uh, domestic. If you look at a small block Chevy world though, we're different. We kind of look more at that peak number because for a lot of our heads, we're not really meeting the engine requirements um, as far as CFM. So 284 CFM, obviously we have small block Chevy heads easily get that. But once you start turning the higher RPMs on the 23 degree stuff, it's a little bit trickier because for a most 23 degree head standard port, you're gonna be 330, 340 CFM range. Meanwhile, that LS heads in the 370 range. Now, if we do a raised runner 23 degree, obviously we can get that. And it, it's, we're way over that when we do our 13 degree stuff, we're at 400, 420. But anyway, hopefully you get the picture is on the engine families themselves seem like it's a different requirement. And the problem is, is we get, everybody gets little pieces of information from other engine families. So like you listen to a small block guy, um, they're obviously worried more about CFM because their heads um, don't flow quite as well in certain ranges than some of the LS heads. But the LS guys are hearing that nugget and then they transferred it over them that they just need more airflow, but their heads already flow more. So it's more about the efficiency. Anyway, it might have felt like I was jumping around on this video, but I wanted to give you just this little thing because the last myth uh, I'm going to try to bust is this one. And it's not going to be on this video. I'm going to do a whole other video, and I cannot wait. It's busting all the myths that LS guys say. And I shouldn't say all. I should. It should be said that this is myths that a lot of LS guys say, and they are incorrect. And I'm going to try to get to those in a later video, and I know it's going to seem like I'm defending them, but I've got proof to back it all up. But anyway, um, remember, these are all my opinions. You are welcome to your own. I appreciate you spending your time to watch my videos. Remember, I'm no Superman. You guys take care.